We take requests for healings in the second hour. You can call in on 702-879-4770 or on Skype, wolfspirit.switchboard1. If you simply wish to make a healing request, please type into the chat room on wolfspiritradio.com with the name of the person, the location, and the condition of the person you're healing. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. July the 20th, 2014, Healings and Meditations with Frank Jordan and the Earth Mind Think Tank Group. Welcome, everybody. Hello. How are you all? I've just uh, connected you. Yes. Good evening, JP. Well, um, one more time, we let Spirit direct us in what directions um, might be interesting to people tonight, and I had an experience this morning in working with a Hindu lady from India, and she showed me a lot of things that need to be understood, and um, in what is lacking out in, in the traditional religions, and uh, the practices they they go into and think that they are experiencing something you know that is spiritual and expressive, but what I realize is none of those principles or practices teaches what we do, which is how to access the subconscious mind and the subtle energy system, how to unify the chakra system so you have access to that to to your psychic. Uh, Connections and abilities, all the vibrant reports of the psychic system. And beyond that, earth mind, how the subtle energies of earth mind and the acacia records work. And I'm, I'm just kind of blown away at the realization of, of how much we do know and how much more effective our work is than the general run of the mill practices and techniques out there. This is not to say that the gurus don't know these things because I, I've read some of the things they've done and do and can achieve and their, their breakthroughs and their realizations. But, but they don't seem to pass it down into the general populace where it becomes a, a common known element of our basic education in life. We're expected to, to, for our reality to be formed outside of herself, interacting with others and <clears throat> following precepts and programs that, of teaching that lead us in a, an established way of, of spiritual uh, practice or religious devotion and things of that nature. But it looks like, <clears throat> I'm sad to say, it was programmed to keep us there because I've, I've hit so many beautiful people that have absolutely devoted their lives to Hinduism and uh, Buddhism and, and things of, uh, you know, the Far Eastern religions, plus every religion you can think of. I think I've run into it. And it, it all keeps the power outside of yourself. You always have to reach for that power that is beyond you, that's in the next higher authorities, which is usually the preacher or the monk or whatever. And the self-realization is that the power is within us. That's when where we have our power, and not only in this group, but to the teach people I work with and teach. Because every every experience I have with people in healing or in clearing work is a teaching experience. I teach them how to do it for themselves and back it up with my clearing the way books and, and uh, earth mind books and living in subtle energy books so that they've got some point of reference to begin working on their own self-realization. And this is what it's all about, I'm concluding, is, is the self-realization of how uh, much power and potential we have within ourselves as God force beings. I think that when our, our Anunnaki dampened down our, our ten strands of DNA and um, scattered those where we didn't have access to this inner knowledge and power, that this is what we're working for and toward, is to gain and regain the consciousness, the inner consciousness of who we really are and what we can do, what we have the potential to do. 
And I know from direct observation that in this work we're doing, it stimulates the DNA. When we ask for something, when we're reaching for an ability or a knowledge or a sensitivity or an attunement, we have our reassembling DNA strands in our system which are the is the, the hard wiring in our computer boards which will allow that to happen and so um do any of you have any comment about this those of you who have experienced other traditions walt particularly you studied about everything can, that can be studied and uh What's your feedback and an observation about what is lacking out there in the world? Or well, it is uh, interesting that you bring up the subject. I'm, I'm wondering if the lady you were speaking to is the same lady that I spoke to the other day. Uh, uh, am I allowed to say her name or first name? Okay, her, uh, this lady's name is Gayatri. No. Oh, okay, different lady then. Mm -hmm. um, same problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, after reading many of the Eastern authors, uh, like Yogananda and Vivekananda, and many of the, of the old masters, uh, in, you were the first person that I read that openly said and explained in, in simple terms that we are a, there's physical body is actually harboring two souls the animal soul and the high soul that comes in to have the experience now having understood that the way you and Rich explain it I, I go back in my memory banks as to the things that I read and the mention of the body soul is there but it's veiled mm -hmm. for example there is a, a fantastic book that I read Uh, many years ago in, in English, the title of the book is called The Day Spring of Youth, and the author is uh, M, just a letter M, and I believe it's a, an Indian teacher by the name of Mahendranath Gupta, and he wrote using that pseudonym. And in that book, when he talks about, because in, in the book he talks about, the title of the book in Spanish is Atomic Gods, because it, it speaks about all the atomic intelligences in the body and primarily it speaks about an atomic God in the center of the heart that guides and directs everything in the body and part of the book explains how in the lower part of the spine is another entity and the book refers to it as the hidden enemy <laughs> like that, that entity in the lower part of the spine its job is to do the opposite of what the heart does it's to work toward the destruction of the body and these are just little tiny glimpses of something that you know you openly teach is that yes you are dealing with entity, you know the, you have the souls of the body and then the soul that comes in to inhabit the body to have this experience and I was I was surprised when I when I first found out and it, at the same time it made perfect sense and it, it made me wonder you know as you said these masters must have obviously known but uh, for some reason uh, it was it was kept whether it was deliberate whether there was a, a historical or social reason why it needed to be I don't know Mm -hmm. I did yep. run across some information on it uh, through Sri Aurobindo's work. He talked about uh -huh. the low self and uh, the, the lower nature and all of that. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that really triggered me and opened me up to exploring it and understanding it and developing it. So that is one master that, if, if, of all of them I've looked at, and I've looked at quite uh -huh. a few. He's the one that makes the most sense to me. <laughs> because he he went through it all himself, just like I did. He he developed it without really having um, any full fledged knowledge. He studied everything. He was an absolute genius, and he uh, he studied every religion, 
every source of, uh, he had PhDs, everything was possible to get, including physics, physics and everything else. And uh, he finally concluded that in order to expand your consciousness and to evolve, you had to clear down. And by, and uh, his reference to clearing is what I was already doing with my clearing the way techniques by the time I stumbled onto him. But his perception was that he had tried everything in meditation and studied all the philosophies and principles and, and tried to make them work for him to go up, up into the light. And he could only get so far. And I'm sure that all of you had that experience of trying to reach up, go into the light and find enlightenment by going up. He concluded you have to go down. You have to clear down through the shock system, which is just a living biocomputer that holds every experience you've ever had from this lifetime and past lifetimes and your soul flow and your family flow and everything else. It's all within you. And But he learned that by clearing downward, he opened up into the light. And the realization that it's a circle of consciousness. By clearing down, you are clearing the access to those higher portals of consciousness that are the so-called light or the source of the God force. And uh, this is what I did also by constantly clearing down and working with clients and learning to go deeper and deeper and deeper and learning about earth mind and, and that's another thing I never see uh, see him relate to no. is the every course of consciousness and earth mind and and the living consciousness of earth and any of that uh, any comments on that? Has anyone seen anything anywhere? Well, it, it's funny. Um, it's funny that you say that about clearing down, because I'm I'm re rereading passages of it in my in my memory of this of this book that I mentioned, and it talks that for the for the seeker to go down into the lower parts of the spine, it talks about the different spiritual tests that the person will have to go through because at one point, the, this is in the style of writing of this author says at one point you know the seeker will have to pass the the gatekeeper or the guardian of the gate because it, it warns you know all the things that you will find as you go down in the spine and it and i always wondered you know you know what the heck's down there that it's so dangerous and it's got so many warnings i'm sorry that the book didn't offer any clearing techniques as you do but now you know putting all the pieces together it it makes sense because you are witness <laughs> to what you come across when you go down there and investigate what's what's stored in in those lower chakras. Well, like you, this lady I work with today has a photographic memory, and school for her in in India was just mortally boring because in in five minutes she'd know what the, the whole lecture was about or the book that she'd been given to read um, and and yet and she went into school in the fourth level because she was already taught herself everything and below that uh, genius level consciousness and then her family elected to put her in a boarding school at age seven and a half and to further her education, all they did was just shut the poor thing down. She was so mo- emotionally deprived and so abandoned and isolated. And, of course, there's no love in those caretakers that she was staying with. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was just frozen. And so consequently, she never really developed the ability to learn how to use all the information that she had stored within her system. And uh, she... She's called me from Oxford, England. She's already has her master's and all of that in law. And, she, and her heartfelt desire is to, her, her sole desire is, is to go back to India and into the smaller villages and, and help people through the law, being a, a representative for people who need help. And and so this is where I got the breakthrough to her is understanding that she was she has it all she has it all stored within her, and yet when she goes to take an examination she doesn't score well because she can't bring it back into a flow of consciousness that that is in, in her. 
um, let's see, what I'm trying to access is the flow of consciousness that comes up the spine that brings any needed information to the reticular and then presents it to the brain in a rational, reasonable flow of information that she can communicate and, and people can understand. And I submit that that is where the problem is in most of us, because everyone has that ability to download and store information in every experience they've ever had. If nothing else, it's stored in Earth mind where they can access it and bring it up and work with it. But you're... Um your technique of what you shared with us um, on, uh, I think, a couple of sessions ago on how you use and manipulate the reticular formation structure is fabulous for getting rid of sub-personalities because I I remember what you said, that you visualize a dial and, in, and then you increase or decrease the amount of, of, of thought flows that are going through the reticular. Mm-hmm. And then you described how the different currents... It's like almost like seeing the the fanning tail of a peacock. Well, I, I decided to explore that a little bit in meditation, and then I found, okay, so this feather is the, is the flow for this particular subpersonality. Okay, what happens if I pluck it? Well, you pluck it, and it dissolves. And I thought, oh, wow, this is neat. Uh, are, are, are you bald-headed now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you take out the, the 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 particular current that's sustaining a particular subpersonality. Well, well, guess what? Now there's nothing sustaining that subpersonality. You just you just took off that particular current. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you want to know the feather, you put it back. <laughs> What's your take on all this, David? <laughs> well, I think uh, a lot of the masters, as you had said, have a grasp of what they're doing, and they're doing it in their own way. But I'll even migrate over to Yogananda. Uh, even the great master he was, he really didn't explain it. And I think Walt's got an even stronger opinion the, about Yogananda than I would have. But his answer to most of the issues related to the low self was simply to find that energy, hold it, bring it up the spine, and park it in the third eye and just let it transmute and not really detail the, the complexity of, of how it comes, the earth mind aspect, um, and just on and on and on. But, you know, it worked, obviously, if you did all of his work, and but the level of work required uh, that he did was extraordinary, as Walt would probably agree. Yeah, and the thing is that so much, I was astounded to see, when I had a chance to visit Mother Center, I was astounded to see how much of his teachings were tremendously diluted because for example in India when people were being initiated in Kriya Yoga uh, by default it didn't matter if somebody had been doing yoga for years or was a newcomer from the street they would be given Kriya 1 and 2 and 2 is very significant because the same way that Frank teaches us to go through the chakra system and do the different things with the chakras in Kriya 2 and I'm not breaking any vows here because nobody's, you know, Frank's technique is very advanced. But in, in Kriya 2, you are shown that as you go up the spine with the energy current, you as you go through each chakra, you're, you're, sing, you're toning the tone for that particular chakra. And when you get to the top and as you go down, the same thing. As you go through each chakra, you're toning it. Because the purpose of the of the Kriya practice, which is to take the current from the root, take it up to the third eye, and then from the third eye down to the root. And the thing, the key of Kriya Yoga was that when you do that sweep from the root to the third eye, back to the root, and it's done in devotion, you're doing it in a state of complete love, that is equal to one calendar year of life. Mm. So what you're doing is, I think, what this is doing is actually allowing the low self to grow. Mm. Because remember what, you know, everybody agrees that the low self is like a four or five year old kid. I mean, people live 80 years and the low self grows very little. And this is what Kriya is doing because the, the, the key behind all of it was that in order to break the bond of that constant wheel of reincarnation, mm. 
we need to let this thing, you know, mature in the one body, in the one life. And Kriya was one of the ways to do it. So, and uh, the the aspirant, the person who's doing Kriya actively, is the initially you do 14 Kriyas in the morning and then you 14 Kriyas at night. And if you're doing it correctly, that's, you know, 28 years of life that you're maturing for every calendar day. So that that was the purpose, and that's why many, many practitioners would begin to experience psychic awakenings. And I mean, it happened to me. I could hear the phone ringing before it rung, or I could smell the content of a sealed box. Strange things started awakening in me when I started practicing Kriya. So I, I think that's one that's one way of letting the low self grow and mature in the one body, in that one incarnation. Because the the old uh uh in the in the Vedas, supposedly written by the ancient Rishis, right. it said uh, the uh, <laughs> the prescribed thing for clearing the wheel of reincarnation was you had to have one million incarnations but one million virtuous incarnations you know <laughs> no problems no sins no bad karma just one million pure virtuous <laughs> that's a tall order you know <laughs> pretty slow soul growth as far as I'm yeah concerned. very slow <laughs> I think we can get it all this time if we'll work at it and understand what yeah. you're doing so that that was the purpose of, of that technique you know get you to wake up in, in the one life not have to go through so many. Mm-hmm. Well, I've watched a lot of people, uh, guys, over the years trying to find how just to get to a peace or a silence or to just get some resonance with meditation, and they struggle for a variety of reasons. They could be covered in entities that have got all kinds of blocks going on there. They're buried under emotional trauma, drama, and pain. And, you know, it's it's just endless, the things that can block. And, in fact, I was blocked. Even my psychic vision was blocked for a long time. And it took myself and two other people doing a a triple session for, I guess, maybe four or five days of just clearing and clearing and clearing and clearing and even calling friends of mine that were psychics to actually do clearing work for me and stand into me until we finally broke through the third eye and I was actually began to see. And then when it opened up, then it just became a great tool. But it really took a lot of effort. And uh, I think David, my- isn't it interesting that what you were fighting to clear there was that block right behind the frontal lobes of the brain that I feel when I, in everyone that I go into, that yeah. kind of a blowing field, glowing field of consciousness sits there. Uh, that stops your, that blocks your third eye from opening up and blocks your psychic ability. Mm-hmm. It makes you go to and through it with its permission in order to do anything, either high self or low self or anything else. In other words, it, it, when, what this is, is the religious program. Yeah. It's, it's like a, I call it a curse they put on you yeah. that says you have no power when you accept baptism or baptized as a child. Uh, it's it, your parents accept for you that you, you give away at that time your self, re, your right to self realization, yeah. your right to access the God force conscious directly. And that you have to go through the organized religion or church or whoever it is <laughs> in, in order to, to, uh, to be spiritual. And yeah. then, then it blocked what you can do spiritually to act and interact. And, you know, a lot of people, if if they have the opportunity to have a really uh, concise process that that doesn't get into the length of work like the Kriyas and and the Yogananda practice, but there's a lot of practices that are so voluminous and so structured and so large and you know they act like it takes years to do it and it's like, it's like no we need a simple process so people can get right well don't you agree that the process i take you through of clearing yes and coming into self-realization gets you there i know that i'm in in the very high levels and i have nothing to compare it to sure. uh, of consciousness and self-realization and and uh, this is what i give to you guys through the clearing work that was exactly 
exactly the system I'm talking about. Exactly, it, it's simple, it's concise. You can read it in English. You know, you don't have to speak Indian or Hindu, or you don't have to do you know 28 kriyas a day. You don't have to learn breathing exercises. It's, it's just simple. Just freaking. Well, well it's all do it. it's all programmed. That's their. Um, you yeah. know, the backlog yeah. of the control type thing. And yeah. to control people, you have to program them to do things a certain way. And then it becomes almost like a law or a rule. And um, what might have started out as something simple like what Health Frank's technique is, somebody along the way started adding more and more and more just because they saw one person do it and they think that that's the way it's supposed to be, even though it doesn't need to be that way anymore. And because all of our eyes are opening up and we're realizing the strength that we have within us and that we are going into dominion instead of the domination, we are accepting and allowing this change to be and going out and searching for the easier, quicker, um, and knowing that it can be done because I myself can do it. Yes. Well, you know, uh, while you're talking, uh, um, I, I was being shown back through time to around seven or 8,000 years ago when the human population began to grow and expand and literally explode. And in order to control the populations, the first thing that was created was the kingdoms, the, the fiefdoms, uh, which were, con- they put a king at the head of every one of these societies, which happened to be a demigod. The son of the of the gods, and their main purpose was to direct and control the population to be productive citizens and, and to uh, accumulate energy and, and gold for the Anunnaki masters. And so from that point on, uh, the next step was to make everyone honor and, and be dedicated, dedicate their lives to serving the gods. Serving the principles that the, in in the social spiritual organizations that programmed so-called spirituality into us, and that started thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And all we see now is just the offshoot to of that. If you go back into Sumerian languages, Sumerian uh, texts, uh, it tells explicitly how that happened and why it happened. Mm-hmm. And so what we're seeing today out here is our wonderful churches and, and social spiritual organizations. They are just there, have been created to hold the status quo and keep us from thinking, keep us from accessing our personal power and becoming gods ourselves. And that's why they stirred up the 10 strands of DNA. And it's also it was so that we would be weakened down to be subjective and good, good, smart, creative slaves, no doubt about it. But we had a job to do. Now, with this passage of, of the last 26,000 years, throwing off the yoke of, this, of the domination force and coming into self-realization and self-empowerment into the enlightenment period of, of potential that we all have, that's where we're at. That's why we're, we're doing the work we're doing. And this is what I see now as the importance of this of this group, what this group can can in sharing your energies, your experience, and your 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 uh, your knowledge out through World Spirit Radio, we can touch thousands and thousands and thousands of people and bring them into self clearing, self realization, and thus enlightenment as to who we really are and what our potentials are, and and to raise how to it just has to be done. I I I'm at a loss of words. But uh, but you know where I'm going with this. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, <laughs> I think the biggest block to self-realization is, you know how in your clearing work you've discovered that the biggest obstacles, the biggest blocks is belief systems. They keep people locked in place or locked in a little room. I, in, in, in the years of the things that I've experienced, I think the biggest obstacle to self-realization is the person's belief of what it is. They have this structure in their mind of what it's supposed to be or what it's supposed to look like or what it's supposed to feel like or what you're supposed to become when you're self-realized. And that stands in the way of your self-realization. Your self-realization is none of the things that are part 
if you're looking at something, whatever it is, and you can see that it's part of the world of duality, then that's not it. <laughs> Drop it. <laughs> so, like you say, in, in, in clearing the way, self-realization is getting rid of what doesn't belong. <laughs> yeah, you discover who you are by deprogramming what you are not. Exactly. <laughs> When I was listening to all of, you know, you talking about the different gurus and everything and the lower self and the higher self, it brought to mind, I was thinking in Christianity on how they always talk about, you know, the devil, you know, like the devil made me do it. And I'm wondering if that's the catchphrase that they used for the lower self without realizing it. It is. That's precisely yeah. right on. Yeah. The hidden enemy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's that tempter within all of us that is the low self, that is addictive. It's a highly sexual, sensual. It loves anything of, an, of a nature that's is of a stimulant that's, to make its its world and its realization more exciting. And it's the prompter that sits down and throws up those little prompts into your your the, on the, the desktop of your everyday reality, prompting you to have um, fantasies and, and take that extra cigarette or any cigarette at all, which you know might be bad for you. And it, it's it's the thing that holds us in the, in the drug addictive state. The low self literally controls our physical reality. The high self is an indweller sitting right behind the frontal lobes of the brain, where it can interact out through the brain uh, in um, through the thinking brain, and it literally sends down messages and impulses from the mountaintop, so to speak down into the valleys of the lower chakra systems trying to get our mid-range of consciousness which is our everyday reality consciousness out here to respond to positive inputs instead of the negative input inputs of the low cell every moment of every hour of every day is a moment of choice. Are we going to respond to the low self and its its urgings and addictions, or the high self with its higher frequencies of consciousness and understanding and intelligence? It has intelligence uh, that the God-given intelligence to understand what this is all about and what and how to create a reality instead of being subjected to it. The low self is extremely habitual. It loves to do the same thing again and again and again as long as it feels good. Have you ever had sex? I'm still waiting. Yes. So. <laughs> well, I didn't ask you, Walter. I know you're sick. Oh, question. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. It's wonderful. It, it, it's exciting. You can't wait to <laughs> do it again. But the thing about the low self, mm-hmm. and this is the thing about drugs that bugs me, people who take drugs thinking they're having a spiritual experience, it may give you a, a momentary or a, sometimes a lasting experience of, of feeling uh, exceptionally clear and high, like LSD does for you, and you can have psychic experiences. But when it's gone, when it drops, it's harder to get back to again because your body throws up inner blocks, natural mechanisms saying, don't do that. This was not good for my system. I, I'm, I'm going to set up a barrier to this. So the next time, you have to take more to get the same effect and more and more and more to pretty quick you're addicted and you cannot do anything but follow the low cell for genes. That's only that's the comfort zone, and there is where you totally lost it, folks. That's when the high self leaves, and all you have is a body with a low soul. Okay, there you got it. Mm. And looking at the, the, now, I'm going to shock you a little bit. Just for a moment, just be within yourself, looking out to the common populace around you. Most of the common populace out here, their point of self-realization is below the heart in the solar plexus. And the solar plexus is what deals the everyday reality that keeps everybody functioning out here to be productive and make a living. And that's the low self supports that. Um, so it will have a physical reality for its body, its, its DNA to experience in. And for one primary purpose, that's to get you up old enough and smart enough and capable of survival to 
have children and pass those children along, the gene, your genes along through that genetic flow, so that after you, I'm talking about the indwelling soul, low soul now, when you die, and you can reincarnate somewhere down the physical line of the DNA or extended DNAs, uh, in, in a body that's somewhat compatible to you. That were the, with a compatible genetic resonance. This, this is why, why I find soul families incarnated again and again and again with virtually the same relatives, the same uh, association of, 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 of instinctive memories. Um, cause this is what, this is the driving force of the low self, is to read, because this living DNA that's in, within us, it has never dies. It can go back thousands and thousands and thousands of generations yeah. from source, but it's passed through the sperm and the egg to create a new body, and all the knowledge of instinctive life is inherent in that. And as soon as the body is in interuterine, the mother is programming that child again to physical physical reality of survival out here. And she's relying on instinctive consciousness through her DNA of experiences of her ancestors to supply the necessary information and and knowledge and intelligence to survive, to keep on reproducing kids and creating more of a flow uh, of, of keeps the DNA. All we're, we are is bundles of DNA, and our low self primary consciousness is, is devoted to keeping that DNA passing down the generations so our low indwelling soul will have that compatible DNA somewhere down the line to reincarnate in. It's a morphogenic field. The low self heaven, when I've uh, explored that, is is just no, not that much different from the high heaven, the so-called afterlife that we go into. Uh, but the low self heaven is, is one of rest and uh, a simulation resonance with the earth mind and the stored memories of the Akashic records to to internalize the growth of whatever the last incarnation was and to prepare it for the, the evolved or new experiences in the next lifetime it comes into. So it doesn't come in blank and unprepared. It's ready to receive whatever the knowledge and intelligence of that level is. Uh, right up until four years old when the high self begins its and down messages from the mountaintop and and from um, from patterning and programming by the parents to interact in, in a culture or a civilization so you will fit in. Uh, the biggest thing, I've, one of the biggest blocks I find in nearly everyone I work with is that feeling that as a child they didn't fit in. They didn't belong to the family they were born in. And this is because their genetic memory is saying, hey, remember how we used to be. We used to be different, but now they want us to be this way. And so we have to adapt and, and, uh, create our own node of inner, of, of low self consciousness in earth mind. Which incidentally is one of the primary things we do now, uh, as as we clear as we clear people, we uh, sub personalities and major forces or shocks or traumas in their lives. We go into Earth mind and clear it out of the Akashic records, so it's not continually throwing up the same repetitious pattern again and again and again. And it it loves to hold stress. Anything that's not resolved is held as stress in the system, as an an active open uh, free frequency that uh, that you need to bring to completion and solution in order to release that stress and let go of that particular pattern or frame of reference. One, uh, just for an example, women that have had child abuse, that gets patterned into their Akashic records. Um, they in, enter uterine, they pattern right into their children, their babies, uh, the fear of molestation. That fear of molestation uh, 
and early strange sexual activities is like a resonance that attracts it, that stimulates it in the brothers or sisters or cousins or uncles or whoever happens to be around for exploration, understanding of what that, that it's taking prompting about sexuality is. There's a good prompting that says have sex, have children, keep the gene flow going. Then the other one that is saying watch out who you have sex with. Uh, be afraid of it, protect yourself, and uh, I could go on and on about this stuff, but I won't. Um. I have a question uh, for those of us who have, who have no offspring. Uh, we're, what do we share, or is it uh, gone into a... A, a generic pool to it, reappear. It, it's a generic pool of your of your lateral relatives that are joining, coupling, and and the base flow in all of this is the mitochondria, the female flow. It's the one that passes on unchanged from generation to generation. And, and all, the male, because of the different interacting males, different lines that come in, um, they, they alter the physical family reality. But the mitochondria stays just the same. This is why I, I love to take people into their mitochondria flow and go back in time to the original, original mother, the original mother, uh, Nifty, Darson Hogg, and uh, she was a goddess that originated or, or created the first Adam, Adamu actually is what its name was, the first uh, living human by, uh, 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 oh, I don't want to get into all that, that could take all night. That, that's a fascinating study though, and I'd love to do that with this group someday, to take you into your female side and show you how to go back through your female ancestors, and because there's only one for each one of you. And that carries the same DNA all the way back to the original birth mother. And it's absolutely fascinating because, well, okay, I'm going to do it right now, by gosh. Yes. Let's yes. just do it. I'll show you what it feels like. And the power that is in Sarahog, who was a, a goddess, but... She was the sister of, of Ninti. She was the sister of the incredible genius that altered our DNA or created our DNA systems from the, an egg and from the Homo erectus to create Homo sapien. And it, all it was, it, 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 they gave us 224 genes of the evolved 12 strand DNA that the, the Anunnaki had, which gave us higher intelligence and physical capabilities than what the, the, um, uh, Homo erectus had. So they created the first humans there. They actually created Neanderthals and then a, a later alteration could, uh, changed that even more as an upgrade and they, they got us too smart. And that's when, uh, 12,000 years ago, um, Nitty's brother decided to wipe out all humans and start all over again. But didn't quite do it. There was enough road the ark and the tops of the mountains that we got through. And here we are again. All right. This is going to be a meditation. I want you all to relax now. Hands apart, feet flat on the floor. Now this meditation is one that allows you to access the subconscious mind and everything, everything you need to know to operate this incredible biocomputer that we persist in. Take your awareness up in your forehead. But first, while you're there in the conscious mind, the frontal lobes of the brain, you're holding the, the short-term memory of everything that we've just discussed. I want you to internalize that into your operating system so it'll be available to you in the future. Feel that pressure in your forehead. This is all the knowledge you've just been giving. Wrap your awareness around that. 
It's just like becoming that information, that energy field in your forehead. Pull that down to the base of your brain. It's just energy. Open the portal there, which is the reticular. Drop it down the spine. And you'll feel it just flow like water down into your system, all the way down to your root chakra. And it's associating with all the known information you have in, on the various frequency realms of consciousness so that you can remember it and bring it back when you need it. All right, very good. You just feel that relaxation. And you'll also notice that the frontal lobes of your brain have virtually shut off. Now, as you step backward in the indwelling solo, and step on backward deeper now into the psychic center and then relax back deeper focusing totally within your brain deep within your brain and this shuts off the flow to the frontal lobe so you're not analyzing thinking if you are analyzing thinking shut it off and it's, that's probably an analyzer and you that needs to be deprogrammed now go back deeper, relax deeper behind the psychic center, and you feel yourself go into that state that you're going to just before and as you're going to sleep. But but when you go to sleep, it simply shuts off these the front lobe conscious and the low self comes up and takes over and operates the physical body and has the dreams and maintains your life force. But your high self releases and goes on out. And astral travel does whatever the high self does because it never sleeps. Your indwelling soul. Now, in this step back condition, I want you to extend your awareness down the spine, down to the heart center, And find that little point of spirit that Walt was talking about a while ago that is the God Force consciousness within. It's just a little bright point of light. And as you can move into that point of light and become it. And as you do, it becomes a, a dancing, flickering flame of life force. Open up to that now and feel that. Feel the gentle radiance of that life force. It is literally holding the physical form in the zero point. Take a step on back, a step deeper now. Instead of going downward into the low self or back up into the high self, I want you to step backward into the the subtle energy field that supports, that is literally the mind of God that supports everything in form in our universe. Step back deeper, and by talking to you and holding your point of attention, it's just it's very similar to going into hypnotism. But rather than being subjective, in this case, you maintain your conscious awareness so you can be objective, you can create what you want as you do this. And that's the secret of being in the subtle energy field with your conscious mind where desire and will can manifest in the zero point anything you want to express or do. Now, as we step back this time... Our desire is to pick out one cell in our body, and it doesn't matter what cell you pick because they all hold DNA. And I want in this DNA pool now, the mitochondria floats around. There's 12,000 or so mitochondria strands. I want you to select one strand of DNA of the mitochondria. It's the one that passes unchanged from female to female. Select it with your intent and become 
just go into that one one grouping of cells that holds the mitochondria that holds the history your history in all the physical bodies you've ever indwelled in it holds the contacts the way of communicating with all of your past lives all the way back up to Ninti, the original mother now be in that one mitochondria so completely that you remember thousands of generations back when the, when you were brought into the egg of the Homo erectus and instilled as the mitochondria that created Homo sapiens. You have the memory of that. Open up now. Open up that female memory to Ninti the birth mother that donated her mitochondria that you may have life. I just let yourself expand into Ninti's memory. She lives through us. And let your the clairvoyance develop in your mind now and open up so you can see the Garden of Eden where this all occurred which was not in the Mesopotamia where this laboratory was was in Africa where humans were created be back in that time and space now Visualize, remember that you have incredible gifts of healing and psychic ability because Ninti was the healer. She taught the other females to be the healers of the Anunnaki. Remember that now. Open up and remember that you have healing ability also. The weight of using your mind in the manner that you're being taught to reach out now, uh, please be aware of something else that's happening now. The galactic flow that's coming through the back of your heads, resonating out your hands, as, as tingling sensations and heat in your palms. This galactic flow is what the Anunnaki source is from. So you have access to the powers of the gods through your DNA. And they had all 12 strands. Now that you're in here, you're in the strands of, of mitochondria. Be aware of all the other broken strands that are around you in the, in the pool of DNA in your, this one individualized cell because when you focus on something in one cell, it happens in all of your cells through resonance. See those scattered filaments of DNA, the other ten strands that were missing. Now feel desire quite strongly that they reassemble, pull back into the original assembly that came from the gods through Nente. Feel yourself reassembling as 12 strands of DNA and know that that tremendous amount of incredible information, ability, the psychic abilities is there to be utilized. And as you ask for and require and reach for them, they will activate. This is what we're... We're experiencing now in the growth of human consciousness after the end of the last age and going into the new dominion age of where this, where you are presently is in the fourth dimension, the time space interim 
where we will be given the opportunity to recall and remember and develop our gifts and abilities so that we may return to our full godhood. And this is what the tingling sensation coming through your system is now. This tingling sensation is higher God force consciousness and beings bringing back to us the gifts and abilities to reassemble our DNA and have the full understanding that, that we can return to our rightful place in the universe, in the, in the society of human systems in the universe. As we go out into space, we have to have accomplished this before we're going to be allowed to leave our solar system. Feel within yourself now the reassembly and feeling strength and power growing within you. The strength and power of higher God force abilities experiencing and expressing resonating through because of our, our intent we are actually using the galactic flow now to reassemble the strands within us and we ask also that this flow of energy coming through us now flow down through our entire systems flushing and clearing the old negative thought forms and patterns, our identity of being human in the third third dimensional density. Flush out, use this energy to flush out the old patterns and forms, particularly from the low self, that we no longer need to hold on to for survival. That's why we are evolving our civilization is so that we don't need to rely on these old primitive patterns for survival. We're smart enough now to create our reality instead of being subjective to one that's created thousands of years ago for us. Feel yourself shifting, changing, growing, glowing, maturing, coming into self-realization. Knowing that you have the tools knowing that you're being shown simple procedures of your clearing, of releasing, letting go. And while you're doing this, you're opening up the path, the pathways, the energetic channels in your mind, in your brain, to accommodate higher and higher levels of understanding and intelligence and consciousness. Now this is a procedure you can do for yourselves as you gain clarity and higher and greater understanding of how things work. This is where you want to go, is into this state. And this is where you meditate. This is where the power of meditation is. This is why the gurus, without telling you how to do it, they say you have to meditate to come into enlightenment this is the enlightenment field you're entering now of self-realization fill up with light reach up through your crown chakra now pull down the light of oversoul that holds the pattern the frequency the intelligence of higher consciousness Feel that light flow down through your system. Feel it settle in everywhere that your system will accommodate it and use it to clear and release old primitive patterns of the low self, addictive habitual patterns, old fears, domination energies. Let it all go. You are so much more. And now you're coming into self-realization of who you really are. Through the power of the Christ within us, and that's speaking of the indwelling spirit within our hearts, through the power of the Christ within us, we understand.
and we intensify the light. Take it all the way down into your low self, all the way down through your low self system, down into earth mind and use it to clear the old pattern forms in earth mind that hold you in bondage through instinctive promptings of survival. Now we're going to take a break. It's exactly 7 o'clock, our break time. Those of you who want to hold on to this light and continue to work with it, do so. And in five minutes, JP will come back on and we'll use this energy, this incredible force and power we are, to reach out to the hearts and minds and to the grids of consciousness to others to heal and inspire them to understanding. Welcome back. Well, yes. Um, welcome back, everyone. Um, I'd like to explain something. This expanded state of consciousness you feel, of just incredible openness that it, that embraces all it is, you, you gain that by going through the proper meditation process into expanded consciousness to where you could work with your own systems or systems of others outside of yourself. But as you come back into awareness now, hold on to that expanded state. Don't get locked back into the frontal lobes and the rational reasoning process. See, as you move back out forward, back into the frontal lobes, and this is the way we always come out of this meditation, or any meditation, you come back out through the frontal lobes, back into your conscious mind, but I'm asking you to hold on to this feeling of power, identity, resonance, the knowledge, a little more knowledge of who you really are. Can I f- get some feedback from the Earth Mind Think Tank group now? What did you think of that trip? Best trip I've ever been on. Thanks, Frank. It really got me. Uh, I've been here before, but I never sustained it that as much as I am right now. Yeah, you can hold it right now. And yeah. in, in holding it, you have the power to use it. This flow coming through. This wide open channel through you and resonating out your hands. That is the power of attunement with God force consciousness. That is what we will be in the fourth dimension as we learn to use and develop and bring back all 12 strands of DNA. That is the reason we are here. And th- that is the reason that we are to lift and will lift the consciousness of the entire world as this sim- the simplicity of how it's done and the practice spreads around the world of giving you access to your personal power. Joan, you, you're very prominent on my screen right now. It was very powerful tonight, Frank. As Gary, I think I'm still out there floating in the ozone somewhere. I feel more familiar with myself more within who I'm supposed to. I feel more gathered. You feel your your female power, your goddess within. Very Let much. All of you now feel that resonating from Joan and I, because I'm in direct resonance with her. Feel that goddess within, that incredible, beautiful, minty flow it holds the power of healing, the power of greatly expanded intelligence and consciousness, the power of self-worth, of knowing that you really are an incredible being, and all you have to do is listen, listen to this inner consciousness, this inner power. And it will guide you. And you can come back here any time. We're going through that simple meditation process, getting into this space, 
finding your personal power, uh, working because you're holding on to the frontal lobes of the conscious mind. You can work A plus B equals C back here in this space of A, B, C that is everything. Right on through the X, Y, Z. It resonated with me tonight to more know myself I need to get rid of the bad things. It made sense to me tonight. Clear, clear, clear. That's what it's all about. Clear and, and awareness, listening, letting your own intuition, your high self speak to you. That indwelling soul is, is guiding you and wants to communicate and express and it has access to incredible things that you can bring back from your, your past lives of your indwelling soul, from other, uh, even other planetary experiences. It's all been shut down, so we'd have to experience this, this process of reclaiming it in this lifetime. That's why we chose as indwelling souls to come back in here is to refresh within ourselves the natural inherent power and ability that we have as human beings. God force centered human beings. Any comments? I am so grateful, Frank, that you took the prompting to do this meditation. Thank you so much for leading us to a part of ourselves that we all have been before but had forgotten to get there. Thank you. There's quite a few healing requests coming true. Is there? You know, I'm not seeing the bar down here that gives me that. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with my Skype at the moment. Uh, what Anyone know what I'd have to do to regain that? Did you click on the little balloon on the far right, on the far uh, left? Yeah. L- little balloon? Like the a speech bubble on the far like a, left. Like a cartoon speech bubble. On the left of your of the little bar, you move your mouse over to the pictures, Frank, of where we all are, and then yeah. you should see a bar that kind of rises up. It, it doesn't want to rise for me. Oh, uh, you've got the rising up. This one. Are you in um, full screen? Oh, no. How do I get there? Oh. Um, hang on. Let's see if there's a. Uh, well, the the place where I can write show, just showed up. But I don't see any messages above that. Oh, oh, scroll here we go. Here we go. Got it. Pulled down on the right. well, shall I read string the, and I, came right down. <laughs> shall I read the first one and get you started so you get yourself oriented? So this is all the way up the top at uh, 18 alone. Frank, you had a session with my friend Barbara a while back. She was with a good friend Friday. That's not a friend. Uh, um, she was with a good friend Friday who was on life support secondary to multiple head injuries. Wow. This woman's name is Christina, age 49, from Acton, California. I believe she wanted to leave. Her last relationship was severely abusive, and though she was currently in a better relationship, she refused to go to the hospital after several incidents of blackouts. Barbara was with her as she passed away. She assisted to clear past karma and performed a rite of passage. Christine's two, two daughters were there, Ashley, age 26, and Caitlin, age 22. I'm requesting the Book of the Dead for Christina, and please check both daughters and Barbara to be sure they are clear. There's a son also who needs to be wrapped in love, Hunter, age 20. Also, Christina is an organ donor. Her heart, both kidneys and one retina were harvested and already transferred to recipients. Can you please clear these? She saved three other lives on one person's sight in her sacrifice. I feel that she learned all she, all she came for and didn't have the strength to overcome the trauma of her life. Mm. Barbara may be listening on Wall Spirit, or you can go through me. I hope to be listening during the healings. Wow. All right, Diane, are you there? Are you with us? Yeah, she's listening. Okay, she's listening. Diane, you don't have to speak. 
we'll work through you. Since you have intimate contact with all these people, just open up your awareness to Christina, through your friend Barbara, and ask to experience Christina's indwelling soul that has departed. And you'll feel that it's already in transition. It's in the resting zone. Uh, there, there's a zone of reorientation that gives you time to climb into that state of consciousness. So the high self is all right. It's taken care of. The low self, the low soul, is Christina's low soul? Yes, it is. Is it in one of the sisters? Yes. Go to the sisters and check each one at a, one at a time. Now we're going to open up to the group mind consciousness through the family with the low soul of Christina. All right, low soul, please listen to us now. Low soul, it's not appropriate for you to be in this family member now. You must go to your resting place. It's where you rest and gain energy and strength and orientation to come back in further down your family line to actually through the mitochondria DNA that holds your family line together. We're going to give you release now and go into the light. I'm opening a portal, a spiraling portal a light tunnel, and we're bringing angels to help release you from your any of your relatives that you are in now. Please clear and release, go into the light, and take with you your low self-fear of death and any predispositions to any illnesses or diseases in your genetic line. We're reaching out and touching the entire family now, clearing and releasing these into the light. Into the light, clearing, releasing, taking them into matter unorganized so they can be of no effect on anyone in the family flow now. Through the power of the Christ within us, we, we clear you of any karma. We clear your family of karmic interactions to the degree that we're allowed. And the entire family feels the enhancement uh, the enlightenment of Christine's present state of consciousness, her higher consciousness, welcoming her release rather than a continuation of her suffering, honoring Christina for who she was, loving her, and we feel the flow of family love, the supportive, nurturing aspect of our group mind family consciousness. Nurturing and supporting everyone through this time of trial. Now, Christina's low soul is cleared, and we ask any other low souls who, which might be hung up in this family group, or of anyone listening to this broadcast, anyone experiencing low self indwelling Low souls, we're talking to all those souls now and through the power of the Christ within us. We're releasing you to your own proper plane of consciousness. To await reincarnation, you observed what happened here. You know this is for your highest and best interest. It's to the highest and best good of the person you're indwelling in. Go into the light and leave the natural, the right, the perfect low soul, giving it full charge of the body again with no interference from the indweller. Go into the light, everyone listening to me now, because I encounter this in at least 40% of the people I work on, the indwellers, release them into the light. Now let them go. If you just open your mind for a moment and you'll remember who, what relative or friend died close to you that you particularly loved and had empathy with, 
those are the ones that, that the portals are open and they slide into you to release those those grandmothers those mothers of protective friends release into the light now releasing all these souls from the vast consciousness of the, of the earth mind think tank group and from Wolf Spirit Radio release into the light take with you any illnesses or predispositions or any genetic patterning toward any disease that can be genetically carried and triggered from one generation to the next the morphogenic field of these illnesses are cleared and released we're expanding greatly into expanded consciousness of all human beings desiring asking for this release and so it is close now we close to those portals center back into yourself bring awareness back up into your through your third eye and your frontal lobes of your brain be here but stay connected for the the healing that are to follow uh, okay okay so next one oh, oh sorry yeah, Frank. we, <laughs> we did some incredible breath. things there guys uh, and I'm sure you could all feel those releases anyone who is having difficulty or not feeling what's happening or feeling their thoughts within themselves or feeling the, the tingling of the, of the galactic flow moving through you it's simply because you have blocks and declaring the way techniques or direct work with any of us who are involved in this can help you to clear those techniques or come into understanding of how to gain the true power and and potentials of this incarnation. Okay, JP, what? Sorry. Um, uh, Erlene, Erlene, I think, maybe Dickens. Uh, she's 39. Severely talk neck to the right. Oh, pain throughout her neck and back. Oh, I can so relate. Uh, okay. We, we, you know... It's a very, very kind of a common thing, isn't it, Frank? Uh, talk necks and yes, it is. These little, um, you know, the, the, you get a little lump or a nodule that breaks the smooth flow of the neck. What's going on there? Is this in in Erlene? Oh, sorry. I was I was I was being a bit general there. So yeah, let's deal with Erlene and then then um, see what see what. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Teresa, yep. extend yourself to Erlene. Mm-hmm. Stand behind her. And put your hands on each side of her neck, not quite touching her neck. Now, uh, just tune in to uh, and become one with her, and uh, I'll do it with it gently. Uh, just see the perfection of the neck and those injured discs and the, the things that hold that that uh, wry neck in place. Now take your hands, uh, touch the neck, and begin gently to just rock the, the head back and forth, just a quarter of an inch at a time as it loosens up a little more and a little more and a little more. And soon she'll feel that rigidness releasing from her neck. And at this point, we can bring the vertebrae back into alignment that are misaligned there. Uh, take the heel of your hand, put it on the left side of her, the vertebrae string there, and push gently in about the mid-range of her neck straightening her neck up as you lift with the right hand to bring the head up straight back into place now we can begin healing first of all we clear clear the rigid patterning that she has been experienced 
has experienced that created this, or or the inflexibility, something in her family that's uh, inflexible parent perhaps that patterned this into her neck. <laughs> now we're we're rocking the head again further and further as all this loosens up, clearing the mental emotional cause of this right neck is flushing that energy down her spine and out into earth mind rocking her head back and forth right and left the neck is in perfect alignment now now we recreate the discs that were compressed on the right side um, to the power of the crisis in us we visualize these discs spiraling counterclockwise from the right side to the left around the back and around the front, we see a spiraling energy flow in each one of those discs. It's a blue-green, kind of an opal-green energy that's replacing, rebuilding the tissues. Now tip the neck forward and back. The head forward and back slowly is rocking it back and forth until it comes totally into relaxation and free of all stress and alignment. Now the neck is totally free. Wrap the neck, reverse that energetic flow through your hands into a clockwise energy. I call it the 110 energy. That It's like visualizing a plaster cast of positive energy going into her in a clockwise motion that's positive, where the other one was counterclockwise negative, working with the earth mind. Now you work as oversold to hold the form of the perfect reality in this woman's neck. Through the power of the crisis in us, we see this neck in the perfect and normal condition. And you'll notice your hands are extremely hot as you do this. Mm-hmm. All right, and so it is. Thank you. Well, get, give us some feedback as quick as you can on how well she accepted that. Oh, thank was, you. was she listening to the broadcast? I'm quite sure. Hi, Arlene. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> Congratulations, Arlene. Okay, Teresa, further. So another one is uh, from Susan Hartung who's 50, is from London, Canada, uh, severely bruised leg, knee, and foot from a fall last week. All right. <clears throat> Looking down from Susan's eyes, in that left, see that left knee? Right leg. It's the right, right, it's right, the right leg. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, and around, send down clockwise, down from the middle of the thigh, a circulation of energy to release the stress and the trauma. This stimulates the natural healing, the clearing of the bruises, and the strained tissues that... Just wrap the whole lower leg in this clockwise flowing rotation coming down from your hand over her right knee and all the way down through her foot. Through the power of the crisis in us, we see this foot in the perfect normal condition. And now, Susan, with that healing energy flowing into you, take your awareness back in time to where the accident occurred and go back a few steps prior to wherever the accident occurred and feel and visualize the creation of an, a reality where you did not fall down through your choices of stepping or whatever happened to you. You did not fall and bring yourself forward with this flow of energy coming from our hands right up to the present without the accident occurring and extend that right on into the future so you are clear to the power of the crisis in us. This healing energy will rapidly heal your symptoms now. 
and so it is thank you okay uh, again from London Canada Gabe Regano who's 55 has metastasized cancer Well, all these with cancer, we open up to Gabe now, and even though he may not be listening, we're contacting him to the Psychic Center. Gabe, at this time, you're in tremendous fear of death, and you are doing a reevaluation of your life looking at things in your life that you would have changed and done differently the choices that you would have made that would make a different reality now and that is exactly why this is happening to you is that you have this opportunity in transition to work with yourself to deprogram to clear and release the wrong choices you made in your life and I feel a lot of up in your throat of how you expressed yourself, how you were heard, and the changes you could have made, but instead you you brought the energy back to yourself rather than reaching out and helping others. I'm feeling that as as high heart pressure in the middle of the chest. This is a relationship area. Gabe, it's time for you to go back and revisit all those relationship situations where you could have made other choices and make those choices. Live them out and create a reality where the cancer does not metastasize or even begin to form in you because you could have created reality without having this to bring you uh, into a state of, of personal karma where you need to reassess your life before you transition out so you will not take that as karmic energy into your next lifetime. Now we have a flow of our group mind consciousness, healing energy, wrapping you, Gabe, and it is entirely your choice to accept this energy to assist you in your clearing, your technique, and to release the mental emotional cause of these cancers. And notice where everyone is located in the metastasis. In every spot will be a place where you stored negative emotional energy and interactions with others and choices, wrong choices you made, domination things you may have done. This is this is a living opportunity to do exactly what happens as soon as you transcend in any case where you have to go through this process. You have the opportunity to do it in life and to make things right within the life with everyone you can possibly touch simply energetically if no other way through the power of the cards within us we assist Gabe in his self-realization his self-analysis and to create a reality a parallel reality where he all of his right choices manifest and create a positive reality for him now go back in time, Gabe. We're taking you back in time to a point where none of this, you, where you had not created this negative potential yet. And I see the need to even go back into your family flow and clear a lot of these negative patterns from them. Clear and release your family flow and create a parallel reality where you always make right choice, and that right choice means speaking from your uh, over soul, from your indwelling soul, high soul, and not responding to the promptings of low self and low soul, as we've discussed tonight. Through the power of the Christ within us, we say, Gabe, 
coming into self-realization, self-awareness, and the healing flow we're wrapping around him and will continue to hold, giving the opportunity to clear and release the mental emotional cause of the cancer, stimulating his own immune system, uh, the T cells in the center of, oh, center of his breast, in the breastbone, releasing the energy off that to suppress the, the T cells, and from the spleen, and from the marrow of the bones. Neutralizing the cancer, no longer supporting its existence. We take the power and energy away from the, the mental emotional cause of the cancer, taking that energy away from the cancers so they shrink and no longer have a purpose or a job to do. Through the power of the crisis in us, we see Gabe in a perfect and normal condition and we extend that into the future and we've given him the power to regulate and dedicate his own self-healing, which will help him into grow into self-realization. And so it is. Thank you, Gabe. That was a good lesson for all of us there. Thank you so much. So now we're coming back up. Uh, we're looking at... Um, hmm, uh-huh. Wow. So many, right? Okay, uh, uh, Teresa, have we uh, have we uh, mentioned Mar- Margaret Jane Clark? Uh, well, no, not yet. No, not yet. Okay, so this is Margaret Margaret Jane Clark uh, from Simcoe in Canada. She fell in her garden and broke her hip. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Teresa, go to her, be her now, look out her eyes, and feel this flow of energy coming down through you. We know she's probably had the surgery to replace her hip so it can heal. Wrap your awareness around the break. We can accelerate the healing so she can heal without pain and rapidly come into full function again. All right, very good. I uh, um, Teresa, you know this person, and so I would suggest that you help her reappraise her life. In the, I I I actually don't know her. She's a mother of a friend. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot more work that could be done with her, should she be open and receptive to it. Okay. The, I'll which, which, could prolong, which could prolong her life considerably. All right. What is next? Okay. So coming up after that is, this is uh, from the chat room, Mary Ann, for Scott of London, Ontario. This is here. There's a lot of sick people in London, let me tell you, who keeps unexpectedly fainting as he goes through his day. Poor Scott. All right, let's tune in to Scott through Mary Ann. Through Dave. This is interesting. It, it, it feels like uh, like he loses the blood pressure, suddenly drops, and it drains his head of blood. I wonder if that's a, a causative factor here. The need to stabilize his blood pressure so he has uh, sufficient 
nurturing oxygen in his brain all the time. All right, we'll go into his system, clear the mental emotional cause of this condition in Scott that causes him to faint. So no matter what his position, standing up, lying down, he has adequate energy of the brain and that the lungs are absorbing enough oxygen to keep his brain vital and functioning throughout the day and night. I don't feel any tumors or anything of that nature. If there is anything of that nature, we clear that now. It does not exist. But I don't feel anything like that. It feels like something to do with his blood pressure. All right. I, 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 it's too resonant with him. We feel him. I actually feel his system tightening up, and to, to a normal blood pressure level, and adequate blood passing through his brain, supplying oxygen and other nutrients. Okay, Scott. Now we project this into the future, so this healing energy will allow you to continue to express. I'm sure you're working with the doctors, and I I won't I won't comment on the medications. I am not at liberty to do that, for they do the best they can with what they had to work with. All right. Very good. Close to Scott. All right. Who's next? Okay. Now we are looking at... Uh, oh, yes. Now this is a very interesting one. Um, this is for Evelyn Lee of London, Canada. To be cleared of abandonment issues from a mother who didn't want her. And... Um, I'd like to extend that to everybody who's <laughs> had a mother that didn't want them, because I think it's quite common, more common than we might imagine. Yeah, and it, it gives almost irreparable psychological lack of self-worth to the person that this happens to. Um, if mother couldn't love me, then I'm not lovable. So let's use the group mind consciousness to expand, extend this out as a healing to the entire listening audience, all the beautiful souls who felt like they were abandoned by their mother, that they weren't cared for or nurtured or abused by their mother. Anyone with mother issues of any kind. All right. What this is, this is a stress that is carried in your systems. It's You created a, a, a subpersonality of the abandoned, worthless child. I want you to release that subpersonality by thinking about it, feeling it in your system. Feel it rise up now in your body. The subpersonality through all the chakras of the abused, abandoned, neglected child. Push that child right straight out forward. Release it. Let her go into the light, into a state of consciousness where she's loved. Create a place, a home, a nurturing place. There's already one there in the angel, angelic realm for people and and persons and subpersonalities of this nature because a a subpersonality is a living form of consciousness within us and once consciousness is brought into form it is never released until the trauma is healed and brought to completion 
So what you see is this a personality going to a home with a beautiful, loving, nurturing mother raising his child up to be beautiful, loving, and nurturing, full of femininity, full of self-worth, lighthearted. See your subpersonalities going into that home now and evolving and growing up into a beautiful, expressive, loved, loving human being. Now, what we did there is an incredible tool of shifting consciousness because the subconscious holds on to any pattern or form, anything experiences or subpersonalities we create. And they're always there interactive uh, hard disk waiting to be triggered and pulled up anytime anything triggers them. By pulling that up and healing it, by giving it what it needs, which is love, you bring the completion, that subpersonality, and take it into the light of fulfillment and nurturing and release it, and the subconscious will release it that way. This is the way with any stress situation, uh, anything you've experienced anywhere at any time, uh, it, if or any time you're involved in a situation that you can't bring to completion for some reason or find a, a positive solution for, the principle is to, in your mind, take your awareness into that situation and bring it through to completion because the subconscious is incredibly literal. It believes everything you imagine or everything you fantasize everything you create in your mind and bring it to completion and release it give it a positive fulfillment so it can be released now that's a wonderful tool for healing some really horrendous scars within your system okay lovely one questions that was a good one. yes we've got one last one I think which is uh, Amber Needham 40 St. Thomas Canada she's losing eyesight at 40 which is not good <laughs> At 40. All right, let's tune in to Amber. Uh, Amber, there's a psychological cause for your failure of sight. Uh, what I feel is, is you're pulling back from circumstances around you that you have seen in the past that exactly what we just talked about with the last person of stress that isn't, hasn't been brought through to completion. Now, Amber, I want you to bring into your mind, into your awareness and work through this on your own time, things you saw in your lifetime you didn't want to see or things you wanted to avoid, circumstances or people that bring stress into your body. Go back through your history, examine each one of those, and create and bring them that stress to a completion, a positive reality, and release it, and your subconscious will... will okay, the suppression on the eyesight... I want to do some physical healing on this also, but we're, we need to clear the mental cause, which I just discussed, discussed. I'm putting, standing behind you, putting my hands over your eyes, dropping into your, uh, the consciousness of your eyes. We'll take the left eye first. Through the power of the Christ within us, we see this eye in the perfect and normal condition. We strengthen in the retina. The, we clear the clouds. Clear the... Forget what they call now. The, the floaters. Clear the floaters. Strengthen the power coming back to the nerve through the eye. I don't feel anything wrong with the eye except that filter that you put in your eye so you, you wouldn't have to suffer the consequences of things you observed. You are a very delicate, sensitive person. 
And so even a lot of things you see on TV uh, um, really attack your sensitivity. So don't watch or, or take yourself into any situation where you're going to see things that abuses your sensitivity and your your sense of right and wrong. You're so sensitive you download even from the TV, you download the shocks and traumas in your own system. Don't do that. If you're going to observe such things, put it out there. But don't take the energy into into what your observer is seeing. There. I see the power of the crisis in us. We shift to the right eye. We bring this eye into pure and perfect condition. But you keep them strong and healthy by avoiding things you don't want to bring into your sensitivity. And everyone out there that's listening, that's a good thing to, to experience, express. Questions? Does anyone now in the in the group, the Earth Mind group, do you have anything you want to express tonight? I think what you were saying is very important about what you see and hear, say on TV, the news, whatever you bring it into your system, <laughs> and most people are not. Um, wise enough or aware enough not to download it into themselves the other aspect of that is it grinds down your sensitivity to the point where you're just numb and and can't relate and empathize with the the negative things that go on in the world and it's not to, to empathize with them to download them into your system but to recognize what you might be able to do to alter that reality or, or to help the people out, even energetically. We were, uh, we recently met a few people that are suffering from uh, the uh, being being glued to the TV while watching news and stuff, trying to figure you know follow the news of what's going on in the world, and they're so terrorized by it. That they can, they don't know what to do. They're just going crazy. There's a very planned consciousness behind that. That's mm-hmm. doing that. It's that is programming us to be subjective and and to not fight back when if they choose to take us out. I'm not being negative in saying that. I'm saying we have the the greatest power we have is our power of discernment and the ability to withdraw the support from anything that's negative because it can only exist if we recognize it and allow it to exist. Leaving seeds of fear within our time. JP, I see a question here from Free Sovereign. Did you uh, uh, bring that one up? Uh, I don't think so. So should we la- uh, finish off with that one? Here's a question for... Uh, well, here we go. Isn't much of the challenge of humanity related to the duality polarity of the physical body, skin suits, when our soul is fully androgynous at the spiritual level? I... Yeah. You get that? Pretty complicated question. <laughs> well, it's just... Uh, here's where we open it up to the group. Go for it, guys. Fix that. Well, the duality issue, I always remember... Um, this was explained very well by uh, Trumbalo Melchizedek in his book, Living in the Heart, that it has... We actually have that in us, in our complex energy architecture we have that power within us to jump from polarity to oneness or back to polarity if you if your consciousness primarily exists in your mind 
the mind that knows nothing but polarity. That's why, that's why for those out there that understand and have read human design, that's why most of humanity is in such trouble because we let the mind, we use the mind to make decisions for us when in reality the mind doesn't know you. The mind, all it knows is duality and look at the illustration I'm going to present to you. You are going to decide on something and you sit down and you analyze the pros and the cons. Why do you do that? Well, because the mind doesn't have the answer. So in, in human design terms, you know, depending on your design, you have an inner authority that will guide you to what is the correct decision for you. Not for your neighbor or somebody else, but for you. So the mind knows nothing but duality. It can only see the two sides of any coin. But when you take your consciousness into your heart center, the heart knows nothing but oneness. It doesn't have a notion of duality. And that's why um, the most of you must be aware of the, all those stories based on opening, a, taking a genie out of a bottle. There's always the underlying theme that every time you ask the genie for something, it gives you what you want, but there's there's a trick to it. Like, for example, I want a million dollars, and the ant you love most in the world dies, and you get her money. You know, it gives you what you want, but it takes something, and that's the, that's the way the mind works. That's the way duality works. So when you manifest something from just your mind plane, from the mind power, whatever you want to call it, you have to deal with the manifestation of what you want plus elements that you don't want. But if you go into your heart space and manifest from there, you are just going to get what you wanted to manifest. There is no trick to it. It's just what you want. There's no, there, there will be no opposite polarity to what you have manifested. Mm -hmm. Perfect, Walt. Thank you. That's a good ending. And we end with the realization that we manifest the reality around us. It's either... Uh, unconsciously manifested by the standing waves of the past and the earth mind, the Kasich records, and it resonates on through the zero point to become a continuation of whatever you experience and whoever you are. But in that zero point, in that moment of collapse of the standing waves, is where you inject your desire, will, and choice of how you want to experience the rest of your life, even the next moment of your life. And so this is the indwelling spirit that allows us in the zero point to experience all things possible, which in turn it resonates to to its greater God force consciousness that's holding everything in, in form in the universe for the experience. Thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate what you've done for us. Don't forget to call me if you want personal work and uh, uh, contact me through my email, fljordan at cable1.net, c-a-b-l-e-o-n-e dot net. Frank, what is your phone number? I would like to call for a session. 208-344-9188. Two zero eight three four four nine one eight eight, and we'll get you scheduled in. And we we do incredible work just in an hour or two. And each person is different. Each person comes with their own set of needs, and uh, somehow we have the ability just to tune in and, and immediately be working with their situation. I do a reading first of all to see where the, uh, in the chakra system they're holding blocks or traumas or shocks that that might be interfering with this expanded consciousness nature that we really are. And then we just work through it, and then as we clear the blocks, we reprogram with a positive reality and this is an incredible thing to do let's see the change in people when we bring them into the positive polarity just like Walt was expressing rather than the negative expression that they thought they were locked into but you're really not it's just lack of awareness and understanding and knowledge is all that's limiting you right now and for the most of you who, in the listening audience today what we did in the DNA tonight in that meditation you will feel for the rest of your life. You can always go back to that point in time by remembering it. 
take yourself back to that point of expanded consciousness where you had freedom and clarity and use that use it use the God given gifts of the God force being you really are and so it is good night everyone Uh-huh.